and welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, I'd like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my stories for wonderful children. There's a little girl named Ornella, and she lives in a very special house, full of many special rooms. But the most special room of all is Ornella's room. The reason Ornella's room is special on this night is that she has a friend sleeping over for her very first sleepover. And tonight, everything in Ornella's room is black because the lights are out and you can't see anything at all. Ornella and Tracy have just finished telling each other secrets. Ornella had told Tracy the secret that her favorite colors were blue and pink and purple, which wasn't really much of a secret. If you looked around her room, you probably could have guessed that. And Tracy had told Winella the secret that she wanted to own her own horse someday. And Winella had told Tracy the secret that there was a cat's paw highway in her backyard and that someday she would show Tracy how to use it. And Tracy had told Winella the secret that when she had been born, she had been born with an extra sixth toe on her left foot that had been removed with an operation. And then they had been so tired from telling secrets that they closed their eyes and they drifted off to sleep. They slept for quite some time, but at some point, deep in the night when it was still dark and quiet outside, they both woke up. And when they woke up, when they first woke up, they wondered why they had woken up. And then they both heard this noise that had probably woken them. The noise went like this. Theodore. And Tracy Bingo. said, Tracy said, Winella, what's that noise? And Winella said, oh, don't worry, Tracy. That just sounds like Theodore. And Tracy said, what's a Theodore? And the noise said, I am Theodore. And I was here looking for Winella. Who are you? She said, Winella, can we turn on the light? So Winella turned on the light next to her bed. And when she turned on the light next to her bed, Tracy could see that there, lying across the foot of Winella's bed, was the biggest, blackest cat that either one of them had ever seen in their whole life. And Winella said, that is Theodore. And Tracy said, oh, well, it's nice to meet you, Theodore. And Theodore said, It's nice to meet you, too. Who are you? And she said, oh, I'm Tracy. I'm Winella's friend and her next-door neighbor. And Theodore said, wonderful. He said, Winella, I'm here with a message from Liberty Gibbet. And Winella said, whispered over to Tracy, Liberty Gibbet is the king of the cats. And Tracy said, oh. And Winella said, what does Liberty Gibbet need? Theodore. And Theodore said, Flippity Gibbet wanted to let you know that tomorrow is the day of the annual beach party with the ponies, and that he would like to invite you to come. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if your friend came along, too. I said, well, I think we'd probably like that. Tracy will have to ask her mommy, and we will come by tomorrow when we wake up in the morning. Theodore said, sleep well. And then Manila turned her light back out, and she and Tracy turned over and went back to sleep. 
When they opened their eyes again, light was coming in Winella's windows, and it was morning. They both stretched, and Tracy said, Winella, I had the strangest dream about a big black cat waking us up in the middle of the night. And Tracy said, and Winella said, that was not a dream, Tracy. That really happened. And Tracy said, really? Wow. So they went downstairs, they slid downstairs, and they thought about what they wanted for breakfast. And they decided that for breakfast, they wanted to have some cereal. And so, her mommy got them out the cereal, and she said, you'll have to get your own milk this morning, Winella, because I have to go. Oh, no, I said, okay, is it okay if I go to Flippity Gibbets for a party? And her mommy said, sure. And then her mommy left. Winella and Tracy got into the refrigerator and got out the squirt guns full of milk. <laughs> and they, get, they took... They spray them. They get you their milk with a squirt gun. They do. They each had a squirt gun, and it was full of milk. And they took their cereal bowls to the table, and then they squirted the milk out of the squirt gun. <laughs> until they had enough milk. And then they filled up their glasses. <laughs> and then they ate, and they told each other jokes while they ate. And they were cracking each other up. Like what? Well... Monella told Tracy the joke that went, um, why did the rooster not cross the road? And Tracy said, why not? And Monella said, to prove that he wasn't a chicken. And they both laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And then Tracy told Monella the joke that said, did you hear the one about the stupid ghost? And I said, no. And Tracy said, he climbed over the wall. And they laughed and laughed and laughed. Then after they finished their breakfast, Tracy called over to her house and said, Mommy, Winella wanted to know if I could go to a party. Is that okay before I come home? And her mommy wanted to know if Winella's mommy had said it was okay and how they were going to get there. When Tracy told her that Manella's mommy said it was fine and that they were taking the Cat's Paw Highway, her mommy said that that was fine, but that she had to be home right after lunch because they were going to go to her soccer game. So Manella looked at her watch and she saw that it was already 10 o'clock, and that meant they only had about three hours until Tracy had to leave for her soccer game. So they dashed out into the backyard, and Winella told Tracy about how you stood on the wall in the backyard and turned around three times and said, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take me where I want to go. And Tracy said, that works? It just looks like a wall to me. And Winella said, trust me. And so they both got up there, and they were getting ready to start, and they turned around once saying, Cat's Paw Highway, when Tracy said, stop. And Winella said, what? And Tracy said, where do I want to go? Oh, and I said, oh, yeah, that's all right. She said, okay, you want to go to Fliberty Gibbet's Palace by the Sea. And Tracy said, do I need to know what it looks like? Oh, and I said, no, you just have to think really hard. I want to go to Fliberty Gibbet's Palace by the Sea. And so they tried it again. They turned around three times. Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take us where we want to go. And then suddenly they were moving very fast. And when they turned around, there they were in front of Flippity Gibbet's palace. And down on the beach by the sea, they could already see a bunch of ponies running around, playing with the cats. And when Ella said, hey, there's Flippity Gibbet. And Tracy said, that, that, there's a tiger down there. And when Ella said, of course there's a tiger. That's Flippity Gibbet. He's the king of the cats. And Tracy said, is he dangerous? And when Ella said, well, he can be dangerous, but not to his friends. And we're his friends. And Tracy said, okay. That sounds okay. So they walked down to the beach, and Flippity Gibbet saw them and came bounding over, and when she saw the tiger bounding towards her, Tracy sort of went, eee! She was a little worried. But when Alice said, Flippity Gibbet, hi, I brought my friend Tracy. And Flippity Gibbet said, Oh, Wanella, I'm so glad you could come. You have brought another a little girl with you? And Wanella said, Yes, this is my friend Tracy. And Flippity Gibbet sort of bowed his big shaggy head, and he said, it is a very nice to meet you, Tracy. Uh, tell me, me do you like a tuna fish? 
Then Tracy said, Why, well, yes, I do like tuna fish. And Flippity Gibbet said, I knew you looked like a very a smart little girl. Come along. We have a tuna fish sandwiches for lunch, and then I will introduce you to some of my friends, the ponies. So they went over to the, where all the food was set up, and they all got tuna fish sandwiches, and they ate their tuna fish sandwiches, and there was yeah, some fruit. Yeah, a bunch of the cats eat tuna fish because Flipper did, because the king likes tuna fish. Yep. Yep. What were the and ponies named? The ponies were named. There were several ponies, but the ones that were nearby that Flippity Gibbet introduced them to said, Well, hello, my name is Twirl. And another pony said, And my name is Kimono. And Tracy and Winella said, Wow, we've never really met ponies before. We are so honored to meet you. And Tracy said, I want to have a horse of my own when I grow up. And the ponies looked at each other and they said, well, do you have time to stay and play? And Winella and Tracy looked at their watches and they said, well, we have a little time. Tracy has to leave soon to be home in time for her soccer game. So first thing they did was they ran out in the water where the waves are coming in and they built sand castles. And then they splashed along and found some shells. And then they got into the water up to their knees and felt the waves just kind of moving against their knees. And they really had a wonderful time. What color is Winella's hair? What color is Winella's hair? We've never thought about that before. I think what? Winella's hair is the color of dark honey. What? Winella's hair is the color of dark honey. So then the ponies yeah. said, well, before you leave, would you like a ride? And when Ella Tracy said, wow, a ride, could we? And the ponies said, sure. So, Winella got on Kimono's back, and Tracy got on Turtle's back. And the ponies decided that they were going to have a race right down the beach. They saw a tree way down at the end of the beach, and Turtle with Tracy on her back, and Winella on Kimono. We're going to race down to the tree and then race back to see who is fastest. So, the girls both held onto the ponies' manes really tight, and the ponies took off. And at first, it looked like Kimono was going to win because she got right out in front for the whole way down to the tree. But by the time they got to the tree and started to head back, she was starting to get tired and twirl started to catch up with her, and Toro got so that her head was up to Kimono's hip, and then her head was up to Kimono's shoulder, and then she was ahead of Kimono by a full neck length, but then the finish line was in sight, and so Winella leaned forward and whispered in Kimono's ear, she said, go Kimono, go, we're almost there, and Kimono used the last of her energy, and she sped ahead and caught up and made up the distance, and the ponies crossed the finish line at the exact same time. They tied, and they laughed and laughed and said, wow, that's the first time we've ever tied, and Tracy said, well, who usually wins these races? And Kimono says, well, I've won four times, and Toro's won three times. And she said, and now we've tied once. And when Ella said, uh-oh, Tracy, she looked at her watch and saw that it was a quarter till one. She said, we'd better go. Thank you so much for having us, Flibbity Gibbet. It was nice meeting you, ponies. And the ponies said, goodbye. And Flibbity Gibbet said, it was Oh, so nice uh, seeing you again, Winella, and uh, Tracy, I uh, uh, very much enjoyed uh, meeting you. And so they waved goodbye, they got on the Cat's Paw Highway, and they turned around three times, saying, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway. take us where we want to go. And they went very fast, and then they turned around, and they were in Winella's front yard, and Tracy went home for her soccer game. And that is the end of the story. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created, told, and edited today's story. Questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was composed by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, 
please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our email is storiesforwonderfulchildren at gmail.com. You can also contact us on Facebook or Twitter. I'll see you next time. Thank you.